Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime News, and I want to remind you, as I do every single day, to enter our Nintendo Switch Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Giveaway through the Gleam.io link down in the description. It is that collector's bundle that came out last year in November, and hey, with that new Smash DLC out there with Joker and the Stage Builder, it's probably a pretty good time to uh, enter this giveaway. Now... Actually, now that I think about it, we might have some news pertaining to that game. Man, let's just jump into it. Woohoo! So for our first story, we're going to be talking about Nintendo's stock price. Because it jumped 13%. But why did it jump 13% today? That's a really big jump on a day when... Nintendo didn't announce any new games. Is it just the Smash DLC? Like, why is it jumping? Well, the answer is pretty simple, but pretty awesome for Nintendo. Nintendo partnered with Tencent quite a while ago to try to get the Nintendo Switch product to be able to be sold in mainland China. We say mainland China because it's been available in certain gray markets in China and also available in Hong Kong. And there's some interesting governmental reasons that you might be able to figure out that, hey, isn't Hong Kong in China? Well, yes and no. So... Uh, that being set aside, Tencent has filed a case uh, with the Chinese government and it appears that the initial ruling on said case is for the approval of the sale of Nintendo Switch systems and games, that's important, and games throughout all of mainland China. Now China is obviously a massive market and has a higher population than any other country in the entire world. But because of its ban on video game systems and such, uh, it really has become a market for mobile gaming and PC gaming. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if Nintendo can make some headway into that with something that is also portable, but also kind of something you can use on your TV. Other systems have been sold there. Nintendo used to sell systems there uh, under the IQ banner to try to get around some of the laws, and none of those systems ever seem to go over well in China. But having official support, being able to sell the legit product with the games is going to be very interesting. We don't know when they're able to start putting them on sale in China, but it's obviously going to happen at some point later this year, hence the stock jump. Uh, it's a huge market, so if it ends up taking off in China, China, uh, 13% might be underselling where this stock could be by the end of this year. So on Monday, Reggie fils had his last day of work. And obviously, spending 15 years at one company, there was a going away party for his retirement where he received numerous gifts from different Nintendo employees. And uh, obviously, one of the really neat ones being a Mario statue he showed off. But more important than the Mario statue itself, which, man, do I want one of those bad boys. It looks like almost like one of those career accomplishment statues. Man, does it look good. Uh, there was a piece of art drawn up by a concept artist that works at Retro Studios. And this piece of art features main characters from all of the games that Retro Studios has worked on. Which is essentially Samus, Aran, in her uh, outfit. And, and then obviously like Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong and all of that because they did do the Donkey Kong Country stuff and they did Metroid Prime. Well, we were wondering what they've been working on this whole time. And it appears something might actually be teased that has been slyly hidden, but not hidden quite well enough. If you actually look behind this photo, there is clearly a robot arm and maybe a head or a cannon or something. We can't really tell exactly what it is because it's just a small little slice of it and the Mario statue is clearly covering up everything else. Now Reggie fils obviously knows what Retro Studios is working on or at least was working on before they started taking over on Metroid Prime 4. So it's going to be interesting to see if that game ever comes to fruition. The fact that that character, whatever it is, made it into this piece of art does kind of suggest the game's going to come out. Uh, so people are calling this a tease. I don't know if it was an intentional tease because I do think they intentionally tried to cover up the character to get the shot as it's the only character in the art piece covered up. But yeah, I, uh, I think it's interesting. I think speculation is going to run wild. Is it that Star Fox racing game? Is it something else entirely? Uh, is it a brand new IP? I think it's really interesting, but it's definitely something robotic. At least that's what it appears to be. Maybe we shouldn't say it's definitely something when we're not even sure what it is. Uh, but hey, look, proof that Retro Studios was obviously doing something, and uh, maybe we're going to find out what that something is at E3 of this year. 
So a story broke late yesterday about the Nintendo Switch Mini, Nintendo Switch Pro, or maybe the next-gen Nintendo Switch. Basically, uh, Japanese publication Nikkei put out a report, and it was initially translated by US Gamer, and then they screwed up that translation. It was corrected by Sir Toto over on Twitter, and then Jametsu came around and kind of retranslated the whole thing. Uh, and what we're all left with out of that confusing mess, and I did a video on it yesterday uh, that you can check out above, is that the Switch Mini is coming later this year. Uh, so that's a thing. Um, it's supposed to be coming this fall, I, I guess is when they put it. So you're thinking, you know, September, October, somewhere in there is November part of fall. I don't know if that's like the transition to winter. I don't think winter actually starts until December, if I remember right, December 15th, 12th, I don't know, somewhere in there. Uh, so whatever, somewhere in those fall months with the, you know, the, the Halloweens and the Thanksgivings and stuff, somewhere in there, we're supposed to get the Switch Mini, apparently, according to Nick K. And the new Switch is supposed to come after that. They don't specifically say it'll come in 2020, so it could still come in 2019, although, I mean, the Switch Mini is dropping in October or November. I don't really think 2019 seems that likely, but I think what's more interesting than wondering when this new Switch system that we've been speculating and hearing rumors about on is coming is that Nikkei specifically calls it a next generation Switch. Are we really talking about next gen with Switch already? Like, a lot of people were thinking, oh, we're just getting a new Nintendo 3DS style upgrade, which, by the way, would be a pretty significant upgrade. Or, you know, something like an Xbox One X or PS4 Pro or something. Or, like, maybe a slight upgrade, like a DSi kind of upgrade. Um, you know, maybe it's just, like, extra RAM. Like, you could buy that extra RAM module for the N64. Nope. Um, they're claiming it's next gen. Uh, they're claiming it's using all new tech. Uh, completely redesigned. We'll have to see... Uh, what's happening? I don't really know that the rumors that we've heard from Wall Street Journal and Eurogamer and Nikkei necessarily defeat each other, but they definitely provide some interesting information because you had Eurogamer in particular saying that, hey, our sources are saying it's more like a new, new Nintendo 3DS, and these guys are saying, hey, look, it's a brand new system, like it's going to replace the current Switch. So I don't know. It's just kind of food for thought. I'm not really sure what to think about it. We're not hearing specs. Nintendo hasn't even acknowledged that the Switch Mini or the Switch exists. I do think the Switch Mini is probably a thing and probably going to come this year. I've heard enough information beyond these sources to uh, to kind of think that's going to be a thing. As for the Switch Pro or the new Nintendo Switch or Switch 2, I have no idea. I mean, I don't even know if we're going to hear about it this year. But, uh, hey, if we're going to hear about it, can you tell us at E3? I'm going to be at E3, Nintendo. I kind of want to see it in person, but whatever. And our last story of the day, uh, I think, is more so just a story of frustration. So yesterday, we know the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate 3.0.0 update landed, and they chose to release the update later at night or into the evening, uh, probably because they wanted to avoid peak hours and avoid having issues uh, with the eShop and other services all day long, because that's exactly what happened as soon as the update went live. Some people were able to download it right away, but a lot of people, like myself, were getting error codes, and then the eShop crashed, and then out of nowhere, they had scheduled maintenance. Uh, they literally called it scheduled maintenance when it was not pr previously scheduled, uh, but I, maybe it was something that they just knew that they probably were going to have to do. Essentially, their servers got slammed with everyone trying to download the 3.0.0 update, and it literally took out the eShop, and it took out the download servers, uh, and that's obviously not good. Um, it's interesting that we are in 2019 and Nintendo still hasn't figured out how to release an update for a game. Uh, even if a game is major as Smash without being able to handle the load. Obviously today everything seems fine. I have it downloaded. Uh, I did not buy the Joker DLC. I know. Sue me. I'm waiting for a fighter to be announced that I care about. But yeah, I think it's actually kind of a bad thing that this happened. I don't know if and when Nintendo's ever going to sort out how to handle... Like, they obviously knew there was going to be this load. That's why they were so quick on the trigger with server maintenance. But I just... When are we going to get to a point where Nintendo can actually handle a high load on launch day of anything? Whether it's an update, whether it's major DLC or a major new game. You guys remember when Super Smash Bros. Ultimate launched, there was a lot of lag issues that have kind of worked themselves out over time here. But day one and day two is not very good for Smash. Uh, and I have to wonder when Nintendo's actually going to learn their lesson and figure this stuff out. I know some of it's unavoidable because peer-to-peer connections, but some of it is avoidable. And uh, some of it will be avoidable just with dedicated servers. I don't know about for Smash in particular, but with other games that have had issues like Splatoon and Mario Kart and all that. But whatever. Uh, Nintendo is still having issues, obviously, handling online. 
which comes as a kind of a disappointment for me as someone who actually paid for a year of the Nintendo Switch Online service because you kind of hope that your money that you pay is going to be put to good use, like building a better online infrastructure to handle things like this. And I get that Smash Bros. is kind of a unique situation and that it's basically the most popular game on Switch. But man, it would be nice to see them be able to handle it. Um, if like Epic Games could figure it out with Fortnite on their major update days, then why can't Nintendo figure it out for their stuff? It's kind of a disappointment, but hey, you know what? It's here now. People are loving Joker. People are loving the stage builder. Uh, be careful out there in the stage builder world. Uh, if you happen to not be someone who can handle more mature content, uh, there's a lot of stages that are popping up uh, to download from other users that are, let's just say, inappropriate. I think they're hilarious, personally, but... Uh, there, there's some inappropriate ones in there. Even I think go a little far, uh, and Nintendo has doesn't really have anything in place to crack down on that stuff. Uh, if you're thinking about making a stage like that and having it publicly available, I should warn you that uh, it probably does break like some terms of service things somewhere. So uh, Nintendo's probably gonna like chop you down. But uh, <laughs> so make those stages and make them publicly available at your own risk. But it is kind of fun. Uh, going out there and just seeing some of the crazy inappropriate things that people are doing with the creator. Uh, they found a way to kind of stop this in Mario Maker, so I assume they'll eventually figure it out. But here in the early days of the stage, stage builder, uh, we're running into some very interesting things that are popping up all over their stage downloading area. All right, folks, that's going to do it for today's episode of Prime News. I want to thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you drop a like on this video. Hey, let's see if we can get this Prime News up to 150 likes today, huh? And uh, while we're at it, why don't you subscribe for more content? Uh, and man, I, I have to record a podcast today, don't I? Jeez. I just noticed one of my RGB RAM sticks isn't even showing the right color blue. So I set my... Things are just going... Things are weird today. I don't know. All right, folks. I'll catch you in the next video.